the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. In our thousands, in our millions. In our thousands, in our millions. Voters in Rochdale will head to the polls on the 29th of February. The by-election that has dominated the news cycle has been centred not on local issues, but on a crisis in the Middle East. Emerging as front-runner is George Galloway, the former MP who was expelled from the Labour Party in 2003 for his vocal opposition to the Iraq invasion. It could have been another Labour win until the candidate, Azhar Ali, was caught on camera suggesting Israel had deliberately relaxed security after warnings of an imminent threat on October 7th. At first, he had the continued support of Labour. Azhar Ali is not a Corbynite. He spent his career working on intercommunity relations. He was even an advisor to Tony Blair. He stood beside Dame Louise Ellman when she was suffering extreme anti-Semitic abuse. But 36 hours later, the party eventually withdrew support after a second round of comments emerged in the mail. Certain information came to light over the weekend in relation to the candidate. There was a fulsome apology. Further information came to light yesterday calling for decisive action. So I took decisive action. It is a huge thing to withdraw support for a Labour candidate during the course of a by-election it's a tough decision, a necessary decision, but when I say the Labour Party has changed under my leadership, I mean it. As our alley no longer has the support, canvases, posters or money usually supplied by the Labour Party. At his constituency office, the shutters are down, phones have been left off the hook, canvases have gone home. Ali's campaign has been left to drift off aimlessly like the Mary Celeste. But due to an archaic instruction by the Electoral Commission, because it's passed an arbitrary date in the campaign timeline, his name will still appear on the ballot as the Labour Party candidate. I mean, he's on the ballot as a Labour candidate, isn't he? No, but I he'll be—he's on the ballot, but he'll be have the whip suspended if he wins. So he won't be a Labour so candidate. So if he wins on day one, he gets suspended from his own party. Yes. That's great look for Rochdale, that, isn't it? Mm. That, that's just what we need. Now, the bookie's favourite to win is George Galloway, who in his own press release said he's standing on a pro-Palestine message to teach Starmer a lesson. Galloway has campaigned on a very sectarian basis. He's appealed to a sort of a sectarian vote. He's gone for the Muslim vote and he's campaigned not on Rochdale issues, but he's campaigned on the basis of Gaza and to a lesser extent Kashmir and he's not shown any interest in the neighbourhoods of Rochdale who he claims he wants to represent. I think Galloway has operated like a traditional old-fashioned American televangelist grifting for dollars and that's what he's done. I've seen a clip of Galloway on social media where he's actually preaching outside a mosque in Rochdale and he's actually said when you meet your maker on judgment day he will ask you what you did for Gaza. So that to me is the worst kind of sort of Victorian hand melodramatic stuff. Uh, I'm going to vote for Simon Danchuk. I don't think Simon Danchuk was a good candidate because he's got a reputation for sexual impropriety. But in terms of the candidates who are campaigning for Rochdale, and Labour of course are an irrelevance because they picked someone who turned out to be um, an inappropriate candidate, not respectable. Um, so Labour are only relevance in this election. They, they'll win at the general election, they, they'll retake Rochdale, but they're only relevance here, obviously. So I'm going to vote for, for Simon Danchuk because he's campaigning on Rochdale issues. He, he's actually got a sense of what this town needs, where it's going. Um, Galloway's campaigning on a platform of rank sectarianism. I want to appeal to the Muslim vote. I think the, the sizeable Muslim vote in Rochdale can be treated as a block vote. Uh, and they're interested in Gaza and to a lesser extent Kashmir. George Galloway is extraordinarily fluent. If anybody doubts that, there's a moment when he has a go at the American senators. And there is something about his power with the English language, which is a fascinating thing to behold. It's a thing of beauty. And he's a bad man. In my experience, again and again and again, he's used the kind of 
the difficulties and complicatednesses of Western liberal democracy against us to favor his own career, to favor his own nest, and to advance those of people who hate us. I'm talking about dictators, people like Saddam Hussein, people like Vladimir Putin. It's at the moment, it's a scary time. I've always, I'm a Rochdale, I've always been able to go on any street in Rochdale, but this by election has got things feeling a little different. A few things shouted like Zionist, uh, cutthroat gestures, stuff like that. I've been passing cars mainly, uh, mainly the youth, not the elderly, it's mainly the youth. Um, the message they're getting, I think it's being misconstrued somewhere. G Galloway's come to Rochdale, uh, the Galloway circus has rolled into town and he's speaking to a small vocal minority about Gaza and he hopes that that will uh, get him over the line and he can win the by-election. He's a chancer as he has been in many other constituencies but the reality is the vast majority of the silent majority in this town uh, want an MP who will focus on the real key issues that are faced in Rochdale and that's what I'm going to concentrate on. Uh, I think Galloway's got it completely wrong. I think he's, um, he's gone from being known as the uh, MP for Baghdad Central when he uh, was uh, uh, seen as uh, supporting tyrants and now he's hoping to become the MP for Gaza uh, supporting terrorists. That's not what Rochdale wants. We want an MP that's going to put Rochdale first and that's the ticket I'm standing on in this by-election. I think Gaza is important to all of us. You know, nobody likes to see a situation where there are two nations at conflict where the ordinary people are actually in absolute dire straits and where people are living in fear of that conflict. Nobody wants to see that. But that has overtaken this by-election because um, there has been... A, Basically, a media circus has come into town that is circling around one person and one issue rather than tackling what really matters to local people. Who is that one person? You know who that one person is. Why do you think that he's come here to campaign on Gaza? Um, well, the same reason as he went to Gorton, the same reason as he's been to so many other seats where there is a large Muslim population. Um, and the problem is he doesn't improve things, he just makes um, a lot of noise about an issue and then wanders to the next seat. I mean, he's done a, lot, a heck of a lot of seats, almost as many as Screaming Lord Such did in the 1990s. He said the same thing about Iraq and didn't do that, didn't he? In Bradford, he said the same thing everywhere he's been and not delivered, so no, I don't think he'll make a difference. The sympathise, Rochdale sympathises with Palestine, but Rochdale has very big issues itself that need to be dealt with in social injustice and social care too. That's a massive issue. We've got children dying here through damp and mould in the year 2024. I think that's a priority for Rochdale. Well, we're working hard. You know, if people in Rochdale uh, don't want George Galloway, and I, do, I and I believe the majority do not want him to be the MP for this town, then the only party to beat him is Reform UK. I'm the person to beat him. It's a two-horse race between me and Galloway. And if you want the town to be represented by somebody who's sensible, going to put Rochdale first, then you would vote for me. If you want somebody who's going to put Gaza first, you would vote for Galloway. Some in the constituency believe that George Galloway is capitalising on Gaza in order to get himself elected. In fact, his own campaign manager, James Giles, even seemed to allude to this in an interview. When I first heard those comments, uh, I didn't first hear the retraction. I heard the original comments. I thought, my goodness, he's uh, trying to win back favour among the Muslim vote, um, who, of course, feel most passionately uh, in Rochdale about the issue of Israel-Palestine. Then again, he goes on to... He goes to Iraq. Now, Iraq is a, a nightmarish problem for the whole world. But Saddam Hussein is unbelievably cruel. He gasses the Kurds. He gasses the Shia Muslims. He tortures people. He's ferociously cruel. And, and the West tries to deal with him and there are, imposes sanctions. And there's George Galloway. Sir, we, you know, we salute you. What he's doing here is finding a story where if you're 
a bit thick, you can see that the West is doing something which is harmful, but not properly understanding why. And what the West is trying to do is to address something that's clearly wrong, which was Saddam's regime. And instead, you just look at the, the Western action without looking and understanding the big picture. And there's Galloway, fluent as ever, but siding with the great dictator. What he's doing now is he's kind of weaponizing the fear and anxieties, and they are perfectly reasonable, of many, many um, um, Britons who happen to be Muslim who side with the Palestinians, who worry that what's happening in um, Israel-Palestine right now is very dark indeed. And he's kind of going, going for those people, um, or he is seeking to be their champion. But I'll tell you what will end up. The only person who will be properly served will be George Galloway.